as you know, the topic of today's discussion is GitHub Actions Deep Dive, CI/CD for the LAMP stack. So there are a lot of terms here, obviously, and uh, we'll uh, get through these terms uh, one by one. Some of the terms may be familiar to you. So let's start with the obvious one, LAMP stack. So uh, LAMP stands for uh, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So since the mid 1990s, this is the kind of stack, uh, you know, which has been really common and it has grown uh, quite a bit. And even though a lot of newer technologies have come up in the last uh, 10, 20 years, like Node.js and uh, Django and Flask and all these uh, other technologies, uh, uh, this stack continues to be popular. So, uh, in fact, uh, at Devopedia, the site that you just saw, that is uh, powered by a LAMP stack. So that is the reason uh, why this particular talk is uh, focused on the LAMP stack. But that is not to say that if you are not using LAMP stack in your particular application, you will not find this uh, talk useful. In fact, uh, yeah. Everybody was interrupting. Zero Okay, okay, Ramanathan. Good. So the uh, so I was talking about the lamp stack. So even if you are not using lamp stack in your application, the first part of the talk I am going to be focusing on GitHub Actions. So it doesn't matter what stack you are using. Uh, the first part of the talk is going to be quite useful. And even the second part of the talk, the concepts that we are going to be covering are quite generic, and you can reapply those concepts in your own stack. So you could be using Node.js, uh, you could be using uh, Flask app with Nginx uh, as the kind of server. So uh, the concepts are very much similar. What about CI CD? So my particular experience is that uh, I come from telecom background. Uh, so most of my uh, industrial experience has been in telecom. But uh, you know, it doesn't matter in which domain uh, you are working. In, in all these domains, uh, you need to know the basic knowledge of uh, computer science. You need to get familiar with the basic tools, technologies. So when I started my career, you know, I was uh, using uh, tools like RCS for version controlling. Later, I used uh, much later. I used SVN. In between, I used uh, ClearCase. Today, uh, universally, people are using Git as the tool for version control. And not only that, uh, most of the software development and processes are moving to the cr uh, cloud. So what previously people used to do testing uh, locally, let's say in the development machine or do testing in a dedicated develop, uh, testing server. So those things are also slow slowly going away and they are getting replaced by what we call as CI CD. And typically, largely the CI CD pipelines will run on the cloud. So I have also had to learn these newer technologies as time went uh, passed on. And uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, GitHub and how to deploy a CI CD pipeline on GitHub. So uh, some of you might have come across uh, other tools. You might have questions like why not use Jenkins? Why not use Travis CI or Circle CI? These are all alternatives to GitHub Actions. In fact, uh, GitHub Actions came pretty late uh, in the GitHub landscape. Uh, it was introduced only in 2018. Before GitHub Actions uh, was available, people used these alternative technologies like Jenkins. In fact, in a couple of my own projects, I used to use Travis CI as the uh, platform to do uh, continuous integration. And uh, but once GitHub Actions came out in 2018, people started migrating to GitHub. It was a very natural migration path, mainly because a lot of their code, particularly open source code, was already on GitHub. So why bother with a third party uh, CI CD uh, tool or a service when you can do it uh, in house within uh, GitHub? So that is where GitHub Actions has grown quite a lot uh, since its uh, introduction in 2018. And today it is uh, quite popular, probably overtaking many of the traditional CI CD tools. So I got introduced to GitHub Actions mainly because of our requirement at Devopedia. At Devopedia, uh, we have a bunch of tests 
which we run uh, upon every release. So now these tests, typically I do these tests on my local machine. Now you may ask, uh, why didn't I use Travis CI or some of the alternative tools to do this kind of uh, testing on the cloud? The main reason was Travis CI and probably other tools, they work with public repositories on GitHub. So this was not uh, something which we could do at Devopedia, mainly because our repository is first, it was on Bitbucket, and second, uh, uh, at the time when we started Devopedia, GitHub was not supporting uh, free private repositories. Only later, after Microsoft took over uh, GitHub, uh, you know, they started offering free private repositories on GitHub. So our code was not uh, our code was not on GitHub, and secondly, it was not a public repository. So that is why we could not use Travis CI for free. We could, of course, have used it uh, by buying a subscription, but uh, Devopedia as it is, it's uh, it's running on donations. So we try to keep our costs very lean. So we try to use as much as uh, the free uh, services which are out there. Today with the GitHub Actions, it's a very attractive solution because now today on GitHub, you can have a public, uh, a, a private repository on GitHub for free. And not only that, even for a private repos repository, you get 2000 minutes of GitHub Actions for free per month. So that means you can run workloads for up to 2000 minutes in a month for free. And that is more than sufficient for uh, our work at Devopedia. So to give you some understanding of our numbers, when we run a test case for a release, uh, the entire test cycle takes something around seven hours. So seven hours translates to about 420 minutes, right? So that is the kind of workload that we have when we do testing for, for every particular release. But now today when we run it on GitHub Actions, the whole testing takes uh, under five hours. It takes somewhere around four and a half hours, I, I would say. So uh, that's also a plus point because uh, you know what used to take seven hours in our earlier uh, process, now it takes four and a half hours. So that's uh, two and a half hours of savings that we get uh, by migrating to GitHub Actions. Plus, of course, uh, I don't have to use my laptop or uh, you know keep it on during the testing cycle. Once I submit the job to the cloud, the cloud takes over from there. So these are the this is the context in which you know I will be speaking from uh, GitHub Action CI CD for the LAMP stack. So I will give a pause here for any questions. Particularly, I want to know from the audience how many how many of you are already experienced with the CI CD. If not, I'll give a brief introduction to CI CD before moving on to the actual demo. So anybody, just a show of hands, anyone wants me to explain about CI CD or can I move on directly to the demo? Yeah, we can. Anybody wants it? Otherwise, we can go for demo, yeah. OK, OK, so it looks like uh, uh, most people are familiar with what is CI CD, so we will not get into that. So I will go directly into the demo. <laughs> Before uh, I actually look at the demo file, I will open up a dummy repo, which we will be working with today. I have a repo called sample. Yeah, this is the one. So on my account uh, on GitHub, I have this repo called sample. And as you can see here, it is a very dummy, a dummy repo, not many files, and all these files actually don't make any sense. Probably it's like C file, H file, probably it won't even compile. It doesn't matter for our demo purpose. Now in uh, when you get into GitHub, you will notice that there is a new tab called actions. Uh, you might also see it in your repo. So when you click on that, it will give a listing of all the actions which are currently available for your repo. So right now I have a single action called demo. Right, and these are all the different runs, workflow runs that I have done for this particular action. And it's not, uh, strictly speaking, this is not an action, it's a workflow. And inside workflow, you can uh, use and reuse actions, define, create or reuse actions. 
So right now in this particular repo, I have a single uh, workflow named as uh, demo. And uh, how, how does GitHub automatically pick up uh, this workflow? Where is it getting from? So this comes directly from your code base. So in your code base, there will be a hidden folder which you can create in your repo. So you create a hidden folder called .github slash workflows. And inside this subfolder, you dump all your workflows. So right now I have a single workflow and it is called demo.yaml. And that is the, so I have a local clone of that repo and that is what you see here. So uh, YAML, as you know, is a very popular uh, configuration format with the developers. All sorts of software projects use it. So that is uh, th the same with the GitHub Actions. So this particular workflow, workflow which is called demo.yaml, is in this format. We have given it a name, demo. And then we say that every time there is a push to the repository, you run this workflow. So it's not that you have to run the workflow every time. You can give certain, certain conditions. What are the other conditions that are possible? You can say, for example, when you create a branch, you run a workflow. Or when you merge a pull request. Or when you create a pull request. Or let's say a new comment is created. I, yeah, something like that. So there are different uh, triggers for you to run a particular workflow. Now in this workflow, uh, the kind of things that we are going and doing are very simple. It's like the hello world of uh, programming. So let's uh, run this workflow, but to trigger this workflow, we have to push to the branch or to the repository. So what we'll do is we'll take a file in this repo. Just take any file. So I say I make a small change, OK? Some dummy change, and I can go to my checkout. Let's say. Yeah, so I can do a status. So you can see I have changed a file. So let me do a commit. So commit minus am ga workflow demo. So I have committed it, but this is a local commit, right? Before the uh, GitHub repo can see it, I have to do a push. So uh, let's do a push of this. So now it is pushed. Now let's go to uh, GitHub and actions. You can see automatically the workflow has been triggered. You can see here that the workflow is running. It's not yet running. It is say queued. Now it is gone into progress. So workflow has started running. It is eight seconds into the run, 10 seconds. So this keeps updating. You can see the timer here, 13, 14 and so on. So this workflow will take about the 15 seconds. Why is that? Because I have designed the workflow like that. And then you can also look at the output. So the output that you see here, if I will zoom in a little bit, hello world on Linux. So this is exactly what we have put in our workflow because this is nothing more than a hello example. So in our workflow, all that we are doing is running this echo command, echo hello something on something. Now what is this greet name? Greet name is a environmental variable. And we have set that environment variable here as part of the initialization for this particular job. So we have set it as world, so we get the print hello world. What about this one? So it so happens that GitHub Actions automatically brings in a set of environment variables which are useful for every workflow. So one of the examples is uh, runner OS. So this is a variable which we don't have to create explicitly here because it is automatically available to you within the workflow. So that is what we are utilizing. And as a result of this, we get this particular output. Hello world on Linux. Now, why is it Linux? You might have already observed this because when we started this workflow or rather this particular job, we are telling GitHub Actions for this. I want you to use Ubuntu 18.04. So what does it mean? Every job runs on its own virtual machine. OK, a workflow is composed of multiple jobs. In this particular example, this workflow has a single job. As you can see here, this is the only job. But you can chain multiple uh, jobs. So a workflow can have multiple uh, jobs. And each job gets its own virtual machine. 
so in this initialization we are telling that create a ubuntu uh, create a virtual machine for this particular job the name of this job is ubuntu run and i want you to use ubuntu 18.04 every job consists of multiple steps so in this particular example we have only a single step and we are also giving the step a particular name greet user and then we are saying run these two commands for this particular step now the last bit of information here is what is this pipe this pipe simply means that for this particular step we are going to run multiple commands but let's assume that i have only a single command i don't need the pipe i can put this command right away here in a single line so this is the common syntax for a single line uh, single command step but you know typically your a step may have multiple commands so in those cases you put a pipe and then you follow that with the multiple commands so these are the two uh, you know commands that we run and the example itself is very trivial now the naming of your jobs this is the name of your job for example this is the name of the workflow this is the name of the step all these names are extremely important for debugging your workflow because you notice the output that you get finally is based on these high level names so so these two names setup job and complete job are automatically filled in by github actions greet user is the name of the particular step which you have used here so if you have multiple steps all those will be partitioned here neatly grouped neatly together so it becomes easier for you to debug so the naming of all your jobs as well as your this is the name of the job naming of your steps and then the name of the workflow all these are very important for debugging your actions okay so that is a very brief overview of uh, github actions a demo program so now let's take it to the next level right now we are having only a single job what if you have multiple jobs so let's do that what we are going to do is we are going to create another job on mac os so we already have a job for ubuntu but we are now going to do do the same thing with mac os now with mac i can also use the latest version i can say mac os 11 or i can let github actions decide okay i'll just take the latest mac os okay and then uh, let's see what this gives us what else the rest of the code is same i'm reusing the same steps here okay so let's do a push of this push and automatically the workflow should have been triggered you see here workflow is running let's click on this now you see two uh, jobs are scheduled one is ubuntu run and one is mac os run so two things have been scheduled notice that you know both are running in parallel ubuntu has not finished but still mac os is running so what is the insight here jobs always run in parallel so right now in our workflow we have two jobs ubuntu run and mac os run each job gets its own virtual machine this one on ubuntu this one on mac os and they can run in parallel okay so that is what we see here and if you click this you will also see in, if you want to verify you can verify hello world on linux same thing with the output of mac os hello world on mac os okay so what we have just seen is running a workflow with two jobs in parallel let's say i don't want to run them in parallel for some reason my mac os job is dependent on ubuntu job i want this to run after completion of ubuntu then i need a single line like this there is a variable or a property called needs so when i define my mac os job i will say that this needs ubuntu run which is this one so you see why names are also important for the workflow script uh, workflow configuration because you can reference these names in other parts of the workflow so what i'm saying is mac os run now depends on ubuntu run 
when i make this change now the jobs will not run in parallel they will run sequentially so i do a commit and a push go back a new workflow would have triggered there it is now you see that it's sequential previously these were running in parallel now it is sequential mac os is not going to run until ubuntu run is going to complete so it could have completed yeah so the visualization takes sometimes 2 3 seconds to update so now mac os is running you can also zoom in while it is running so it is setting up the vm that is what it is doing right now set up job now it started executing that particular step so because we have given a delay of 15 seconds inside it's going to take that long and then uh, yeah it uh, completes the job like releases the vm and so on so this is about uh, running jobs in sequence so typically this is not the case the usual use cases you know you want to run the jobs in parallel uh, but maybe you have a use case where you want to run two jobs in sequence then this would be the way to do it so that is one variation i wanted to in uh, tell you let's look at another example so we don't need this uh, mac os let's uh, forget about this for the moment you can keep it if you want yeah now let's say i want to increase the introduce one more useful feature of uh, github actions something called strategy let's say i am designing a kind of a web app let's say and uh, so one of my testing uh, test suite involves testing the user interface and obviously when it comes to user interface you want to test on multiple uh, platforms for example or variations of the ui so for example you want to test your application on desktop and mobile so in on desktop you will have a different screen size on mobile you will have a much smaller screen screen size and then you also want to test on different browsers firefox and chrome now you want so the testing itself is specified here let's assume testing itself is specified in the steps but you want to run these steps for all these different environments how do you do it you can do it by simply saying strategy matrix and all the different combinations so let's run this job and see what happens push now let's see how our workflow changes okay it started running notice that automatically four jobs are scheduled for ubuntu desktop firefox desktop chrome mobile firefox mobile chrome in fact all these four jobs are now running in parallel all are on ubuntu but this one is in sequence the way we specified it so once all of them finish then the mac os run gets triggered okay so this is how the uh, this particular workflow is set up the useful feature here i wanted to introduce was this important feature of strategy matrix so which i i believe a lot of workflows will use because typically the kind of testing that they wish to do will be applicable for multiple uh, platforms and devices and browsers and so forth okay okay so to uh, now uh, one more thing is you can also print out for example suppose i want to print these variables how do i do it so you can do that by running this command so this matrix uh, is what is known as a context in github actions and uh, the context has its own properties so in this particular example we have given it two properties device and browser and you can access the values of these properties from within your uh, runtime env environment when that is from within the steps so the way to do it is echo dollar double curly brackets and then close double curly brackets and inside that you can access matrix.device matrix.browser right 
So this is important, uh, you know, because if you do this, will it work? Will it work? But this is not going to work. Why? Because this will be treated as an input to the shell, uh, input to the Ubuntu shell, uh, rather bash shell. So this is not going to work because uh, before giving it to the shell, you want GitHub Actions to interpret it. So this context is available only within GitHub Actions. So by enclosing it in this format, GitHub Actions will interpret it, replace it and pass it on to the shell properly. So that is the reason for this kind of strange syntax. You might say, think that this is strange, but this is the way to do it. This is different from this. This is given this is defined as an environment variable, which is directly available to the shell. OK, and the same thing here. These are all environment variables, whereas matrix dot device it up is a context variable. So that is the difference uh, you have to realize. Having said that, environment is also available as a context, so you can also do this if you wish. OK, this is also a valid uh, way of writing it. But this is not typical for environment variables because there is a much easier syntax. So this is how you could do it. Okay, so that's the difference between uh, what is a context variable and what is an environment variable. So the last part of the demo is this. Uh, I'll show you before running this. I'll modify the configuration a little bit. So OK, we are sleeping, but before that, I want to look at the current. Uh, within my current folder, I can do a. WD that is present working directory, and I can list all the files in the current uh, directory. So let's do this and see uh, what we get by that. Back to workflow. So the jobs are all running as before. So we are interested in just one particular example. So let's look at one of these examples. Yeah, it's done. So this is the present working directory. Home, runner, work, sample, sample, that's fine. And then we notice something here. Uh, so the directory is empty. This is just the current directory and parent directory. Directory is empty. But this is not really useful to us because typically a workflow is uh, created to process something about the folder, right? This is your repository, these are the files. And typically when you design a workflow, you want to look at the files in your uh, repository and do some processing on those files. So, uh, so what you really need to do is do a checkout of the repository in your workflow. So how do you do a checkout of the repository in your workflow? Now that is not trivial. It, it requires probably lots of commands, but this is where the real power of GitHub Actions comes into play. So this part is really important. I'm going to introduce only two comments. So let's say I introduce it here. Step. I'm going to introduce only two lines. What I'm going to say is. I'm introducing a new uh, step and I call it checkout repository code fine. But I am not specifying exactly the in detail the steps of how to do this. All I'm saying is make use of another uh, script, which is somewhere else. It's called actions checkout and use this to perform the step. Now this can be accessed on GitHub itself, so I'll show you exactly where this is. You go to github.com and you go to actions checkout. So it so happens that uh, you know actions is like the organizational account for GitHub Actions. And inside that they have a public repository called Checkout. And what this repository does, it implements this action of checking out a repository. It could be any repository. So this action helps you to implement 
or automate the checking out of a repository. What is the beauty of this is that when you design your own workflow, you don't have to implement this complex thing. You can simply reuse actions which others have developed for you. So reusability of GitHub actions is one of the primary reasons why it has grown so quickly and so fast. Because now I don't have to implement this uh, complex behavior for my workflow. I can simply reuse what others have done before me. And uh, in fact, there is something called the GitHub Marketplace. As you can see here, this is the GitHub Marketplace. And in this marketplace, if I zoom out a little bit, actually it has uh, repositories as apps as well as uh, actions. So you can filter by actions and you will see that there are more than 12,500 actions which you can reuse in your own workflows. Which means that there is a lot of stuff already out there that you don't have to implement. Chances are that when you are building your own workflow, you will find something that is suitable for your workflow and you can simply reuse it in your workflow. Now, if you look at uh, these uh, actions carefully, many of these actions have a kind of creator verified by GitHub stamp. Right? This is something like uh, like Twitter used to have, you know, this particular account on Twitter is certified or uh, like, uh, yeah, certified by Twitter. So similar concept, you know, they have some sort of, uh, like some sort of a verification by GitHub so that, you know, when you are reusing this action in your own workflow, you have confidence, you know, that this is coming from a, a authentic source. It is not likely to contain bugs or, you know, viruses. So you have that kind of a, some assurance that, you know, the action that you are going to reuse is uh, of good quality. Whereas if you look at some of the later listings, like uh, further down the line, you will see some actions which don't have that. Uh, tag. So many of the tags here have it. Let's say I go to the page 49. So you can see here rust code coverage. So somebody has developed it. Uh, no one has vetted it. So it doesn't have that uh, verification stamp from GitHub. Doesn't mean that you know it's a bad uh, action. You can still go into it and see how many people have started, how many people are following it kind of. So that gives you some sort of uh, or how mature it is. What is the version numbering? So that gives you some uh, confidence. OK, this is probably a mature action. A lot of people are using it, so it's probably OK to use it in my workflow. OK. So that is the uh, way in which you can uh, reuse workflows uh, or actions in your own workflows. So I will pause here. Now we have come to the like the introduction to GitHub actions. I will pause here for questions. Before we move on to the LAMP stack. Uh, Arvind Pankaj here. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, a couple of questions. Like in the ma matrix that we the strategy, right? We are giving matrix yeah. where we have the desktop and mobile. Can we give a particular mobile like uh, iPhone 11 or uh, Samsung uh, N and N53 like that in the device? Yeah, I think, uh, misunderstood this. This is all created by me. This is not something supported by GitHub. This is all application dependent. Okay. So I have to create the code here. How to launch desktop, mobile, Firefox, Chrome. This is not so, in GitHub sub, uh, supplies. OK, so where, where is how did you define this desktop and mobile? No, that uh, you have to do it yourself. Uh, so if I am using PyTest, for example, I can uh, select through web, web driver. I can select. This is the screen size I want to run on. So uh, let's say for Devopedia, if I have to do this, I will do it through PyTest, Selenium and PyTest. So this, uh, this Firefox and Chrome, they are just labels and they don't are actually the browsers? Yeah, they are just labels. I am using it for this example. This translates to nothing. This means nothing to GitHub. OK. Yeah, I have so to like, implement it here. Yeah, can you show some information? Somebody else has a question? Uh, what I had one more question on the la previous slide. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, can you see the screen? Yeah. So can you go to the presentation? Can you go? 
there is no presentation no uh, no i will go can you go scroll up a little what to to ask we are at the top yeah okay yeah so the os but it is actual os right it is creating a virtual machine with the right os this is a os so i'll come to that little later so this is what is known as a self uh, github hosted uh, runner okay so when you specify this uh, so how did you get this uh, github uh, automatically it creates a vm for you and the uh, os that the vm is based on is ubuntu 18 point so github uh, supports only a few of this ubuntu few versions mac os few versions windows server uh, i think few versions uh, there is probably a listing here uh, i might have kept it open let me just see uh, this is the one so what are the things github supports github action supports by default windows server 2022 windows server 2019 this is deprecated ubuntu these two versions mac os these two okay now let's okay. assume that uh, in your particular environment you want red hat you don't want ubuntu you want red hat a particular version of red hat enterprise okay. so then you cannot use uh, github actions uh, for sell, uh, what you call github hosted runners instead okay. you have to go with the other option which is self hosted runner that means you have to host the runner yourself okay okay so for that we are using ubuntu 1804 which is more than enough sufficient for our purpose so we are not okay. using any self hosted uh, runner we are using the github hosted runners okay understood yeah are there any yaml documents documentation for yaml what all exhaustive yeah that is a not yaml documentation github actions has a documentation what are the things you can add and so okay on. in yaml file yeah yeah okay the yeah, other questions okay to summarize uh, so here we have a summary this is a github actions page on devopedia you can read about it later so brief summary is here so how do you trigger i just showed you how to trigger when you do a push but you can trigger github workflows on other kind of things for example when you create a branch or merging a pull request or when you are deploying or any kind of discussion or reviews uh, or can we or like set up a particular branch request. so at various points you can trigger different workflows so typically you know you would have right now in my folder i have only one file but you would have many workflows some are triggered on push some are on pull request and so on and you can trigger this way also you can also say something like pull request right see it gives page build pull request review so you, you can trigger this workflow on multiple triggers also by doing this so right now it is just push okay so going back to the article uh, the other part of the summary i wanted to cover is so workflows are stored in dot github workflows okay and uh, workflows are triggered by events so we just saw push pull pull request and so on so full list of events is here workflow is composed of one or more jobs and by default jobs run in parallel don't forget that but if you want to run them in sequence you can do that using the needs context needs property but by default they run in uh, parallel within a job you have within a job you have multiple steps so a job has multiple steps and all these steps run in sequence okay one step follows another now sometimes you don't want to implement the step yourself okay because some of the steps can be quite complex to implement and this is where the real power of github actions comes in because a lot of people have already implemented steps and shared them as actions so in a particular step in your job you can simply reuse an action which somebody else has implemented moreover you can also define your own actions in this folder dot github actions and reuse those actions across multiple flows so that is also possible 
and the last point is runner so every job runs on its own runner what is a runner basically it's a runtime environment it gets its own uh, virtual machine and the github provides these following runners ubuntu linux microsoft windows mac os so these are what we call as uh, github hosted runners but if you don't like any of this or you want a different uh, configuration or a different uh, vm image then you can go with the self hosted runners okay so now uh, the last bit before we go to the lamp stack is uh, making use of the ui here so we looked at our example here workflows all our uh, workflows are here uh, arvin can i have one question uh, let's finish this so all our workflows are here and uh, now uh, this is a public repo now the beauty of a public repo is there is no limitation on how much you can run there is no uh, uh, there will be some limitation uh, in terms of how many parallel jobs and all that but otherwise the number of minutes you can run in a month there is no limit for a public repo and you can actually see this here uh, you can go to your account and you can go to settings and you can go to billing and plans and here you can see usage this month you see private repos there is a limit you are allowed maximum of 2000 minutes in a month and it also says you know this quota reset in 17 days whereas if you have a public repo there is no limit okay so that is the beauty here i can show you our devopedia account now because there are, we have a public as well as private repos so you will see a slightly different uh, set of data the so same uh, billing and plans private repo okay actually i had minutes here it has reset oh sorry i went to the wrong account i have to go to devopedia account okay so here i go to billing and plans and uh, yeah you can see here so when you are running uh, actions from a private repo there is a limit on how much you can run so you can see here uh, 2000 minutes i have already ex exhausted 1600 minutes but it doesn't matter because tomorrow this quota will get reset to 2000 so i will get back to 2000 minutes for another 30 days so this limit by the way applies only for private repos so this is where you can see how much you are consuming on your private repos by the way this is not for a single repo this quota is across all your private repos it is for your account as a whole so now let's come to uh, the question pankaj's uh, question like like uh, if we need particular tool or something like uh, xcode in my case so in the mac os so we would have or how we have to have our uh, workflow install that tool or pull from somewhere like npm or something okay it's a good question so in our uh, article here github actions there is a link here uh, towards the end i think so there is a link here of uh, actions worksheet details of vms so your question pertains to the virtual machine so if you look at the details of vms GitHub Actions yeah. has shared all the details of the VMs. So now, okay. if you look at Mac OS in particular, you go to Mac OS, Mac OS 11, let's say, yeah. and you click this, you will get full details. What is there and what is not there? Okay, what is already installed? Yeah. Now, if something is not there and you have to install it, yeah, you have to install it. Let's to answer your question, Xcode, let's say. Xcode so command line the, tools. Yeah, that's the latest one. That yeah, that's the latest one. Yeah. So this information is available on GitHub Actions virtual environments. Okay. Right. And the link yeah. for this obviously is available from our uh, GitHub Actions page on Devopedia. Correct. Yeah. Any other questions? Thanks, Arvind. Uh, that's fine. Napoleon has a question. Yeah. see this actions is only for github or for other uh, repo other uh, uh, things like bitbucket gitlabs no it's only for github 
Oh, it's only for GitHub, is yeah, it? Yeah. I cannot run uh, GitHub Actions where I hosted the repo on Bitbucket. No, you can't. But Bitbucket may have some other alternative system. In fact, <laughs> I did not explore that. What I did was, uh, as I uh, mentioned in the beginning, uh, Devopedia code base was on Bitbucket. <coughs> so I did a migration to GitHub, actually. Okay. Just, just so that I can start using GitHub Actions. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Other questions? Okay, so now we go to the. So we are done with this demo. We don't need this anymore. So I will show you the actual file. This is the actual file that we use at Devopedia for automating our CI/CD pipeline. So it is quite complex. I will look in, uh, go through it step by step. So there is a job called generate generate matrix. I will look, go through that little later. The main job is set up and test. So in this, uh, what is the environment Ubuntu 18.04? And then I say that this job depends on the previous job. So I will get into that. And then what is the strategy? That means I want to run it on multiple uh, VMs at the same time. I have an environment. My site name is Devopedia. My database name is Devopedia. There is one interesting thing I set up. As part of this VM, I am setting up a container service to run MySQL. So remember, uh, we are using a LAMP stack. So MySQL is the database that is used. So that is launched as a service. So what the GitHub Actions will actually do in this case is it will take this particular image and create it within a container, Docker container. Okay. And as, uh, when you launch this image, you can have certain uh, environment variables. For example, I am allowing empty passwords. I'm going to be running on this particular port, right? And then other options for MySQL. You may or may not want to use it. Obviously, if you are using Postgres SQL or Redis, you know, you will have different options, different way of writing this uh, uh, configuration. So in our case, it is uh, MySQL. Then we come to the steps. Notice that uh, I have a number of steps here. The first thing I do is I want to inspect the environment because uh, you know I am going to be using a lot of tools. So I want to be sure, you know, or let's say for later auditing purpose, I want to record it as part of the output. So what is the event which triggered this workflow? What is the event which triggered this workflow? What is the branch on which it is triggered? What is the name of the repo? Current directory? Which particular Linux I'm using? What is the version of the Linux? Which Apache I'm using? MySQL version, right? And I want to use specifically, uh, you know, PHP 7.4. So I am setting that configuration here. And then I'm checking whether the PHP version is correct what version of Python I'm using. Now you may be wondering, you know, why, why do I need Python for a LAMP stack? The reason is, remember that this is a CI CD pipeline. I am going to be doing automated testing. And our testing environment is based on Python. We use PyTest as the, like the test automation framework. Uh, and uh, Selenium is also used for, uh, you know, the automating the UI access and so on. So our environment requires Python, and that is the reason why we have, have this. Now, obviously, because this is a browser testing, we also need the web drivers. And it so happens that web drivers are installed by default on these uh, VMs. So I don't have to do the additional task of installing web drivers. Already they are available. So I'm just recording what versions of web drivers are available. So this, that is what I'm providing here. The next step is checking out the repository, which we already saw. Then secrets. Okay, managing the secrets. So this, uh, it's a little bit involved. I'll come to this little later. Then setting up the Python dependencies. So, uh, you know, every uh, Python project will have its uh, dependencies. So that is normally inside requirements.txt. So we set up all those things. Then we configure and start the Apache server. 
Mm, so there is, so this is the one that I had most trouble with, to be honest, because this is actually supposed to be very simple, but it was, uh, there are, uh, for this particular VM, you know, things were not automated. So I had to find out that, you know, so many things I had to do, like disabling the firewall, you know, touching this particular file, installing a particular version, and then enabling all these modules. So once you get all this in place, then your Apache will run properly for your test environment. So this is an important, so this is what really took me most time to crack. Then any special setups for your own environment. So that depends very much on your application. So my application may want uh, some of these things to be in place. So I'm doing those things. Then coming to the real crux of the testing, initializing the database for your test environment. Then basic checks on the web server. So we have already set up Apache. We have started Apache. We have set up MySQL. Uh, so we should be able to access the web server. And uh, so this particular step is just a sanity check to make sure that our web server is responding as expected. So what we do, we do a curl request to local host, couple of pages of Devopedia site on local host, just to check that the server is responding properly. So if the server is responding properly, well and good, and it will continue to the next job. If for example, the server has an error, then this job, this particular step will return an error. When a particular step returns an error, then you know the rest of the workflow will not run. Automatically, the workflow will exit. It doesn't matter which step you're talking about. Any step that ends up in an error, the workflow will uh, exit. So that is the default behavior. But that is not what we want for this step, executing tests. Sometimes the test will fail. But still, you want to continue with the rest of the processing. So then you can use a flag called continue on error is equal to true. So what this does is basically it says that even though let's say I may have 100 tests, you know, 85 tests are passing, 15 tests failed. So the result is pi test will re return a non zero error code. Based on this error code, this entire workflow will exit which is not what we want. The reason this, uh, if the entire workflow exists, uh, exits, then I can't get hold of the error logs. I can't get hold of my application logs because remember everything is running inside a VM. When the workflow exits, the VM is destroyed. I can't get anything out of the VM, destroyed VM. So before exiting the workflow, we want to get all the logs out first. So that is the reason this flag is very important. What it says is even though this step may fail, I want to continue with the rest of the workflow. And what do I do in the rest of the workflow? I copy the PHP error log for later debugging and then I export the results. So for example, when I do my testing, I will have log files. I will have maybe HTML files, application logs, etc, etc. So if you look at this particular, this is where the real bulk of the testing happens. Because like I said, our testing uh, automation framework is PyTest. And all the logs are captured in this file, cli.log. Now I don't want to lose this file. So I want this file to be captured or exported before destroying the VM. So now this is also a complex procedure. I don't have to implement it. There is already an action which has been shared by GitHub Actions called Upload Artifact. So I can simply reuse that action with the correct parameters. So what I'm saying, I give it a name and then these are the files I want to export. Uh, export. And it's done. Yeah, so this is how my workflow will run. And uh, I'll not show you in show it to you in action, but we look at a previous log. So this is how you know the action was executed. Summary, let's go to the summary. Yeah, so this particular uh, job first executed and because it is sequential, after this completes, this these two jobs trigger in parallel. So each one gets its own uh, runner. 
So what am I doing here? Here I am doing all the GUI testing. Here I'm doing all the CLI testing. So the CLI testing takes only 10 minutes, but the GUI test testing takes four hours and 40 minutes. Okay, and uh, I can also see here the GUI testing has timed out. I will come to that uh, shortly and then here I have the logs. Now let's go to one of these. Uh, jobs. Now you see why the naming of the jobs is where jobs and naming of the steps is very important because when you have a lot of things going on in your workflow, these names will help you to debug properly and it also gives you the control uh, you know, of a modular uh, configuration file. So here inspecting an environment, check out the repository, managing the secrets, set up Python, start the Apache, special setups, initialize DB, basic checks on the web server, then you execute your tests. This is the bulk of the work, four hours, 40 minutes. Copy the PHP error log, export results, and the rest of it is just clean up, which is automatically done by GitHub Actions. Okay. So now, uh, one thing I want to important I want to share here is that I found that sometimes my automation remember that CI CD depends very much on uh, how well you have automated your test cases without automated tests. There is no question of doing CI CD CI CD depends on automated tests. And uh, automating uh, testing is very hard to do. You know you can't always you can't get it 100% right always. Some issue will be there. And uh, very often, at least in our case, we didn't have any issue locally. When I do development uh, testing on my local host, on my uh, development machine, I don't have any issues. But when I run it on GitHub, on one particular test, it hangs. I'm sure it can be solved. I haven't uh, actually got to it, uh, but if I start debugging, I can solve that issue. But what happens is when it hangs at a particular test, the whole workflow hangs. And remember that I am on a strict uh, time limit. That means I have only 2000 minutes every month. So I will unnecessarily be exhausting that if my test routine gets stuck somewhere. So for that, you can implement something called timeout in minutes. So you can give it a fixed value. So here I have given it a value of 280 minutes. So if this step doesn't return in 280 minutes, it will automatically time out. OK, so that is what you see here in the log. Uh, I showed you the log a little earlier. This action has timed out, right? And that is the reason for that, because I had implemented a timeout, so it came out. But again, the timeout is uh, contextual. I'm not giving a fixed value, rather I'm saying if it is a CLI, I get a give a 20 minutes timeout. If it is GUI, I get 280 minutes. So this is by experience because I know that our CLI test uh, only 10 minutes. So I give it 20 minutes and here I know that it shouldn't take more than 280. Having said that, uh, there is one final uh, point. I think GitHub Actions has its own limit. Uh, I don't remember clearly. I think there is a limit of 360 minutes or something. Uh, for a workflow uh, for a uh, kept to terminate or something like that. There is some limit and there is also another limit called 72 hours. So yeah, you can read up the kind of uh, the documentation to know these limits. Any questions at this point? I hope it is clear. So what we have covered, uh, we have covered main things we have covered is modularize your uh, workflows. Or and your jobs, give them meaningful names. Couple of uh, features with that we covered is uh, continue on error timeout in minutes, and uh, exporting the results, copying the logs. So these are some of the things uh, that we have covered. And in particular to LAMP stack, we found out how to launch a service for MySQL, how to set up uh, Apache server. On this particular uh, Ubuntu environment, you know, this <coughs> it might be slightly different on Mac OS, definitely different on Windows. So that uh, you have to figure it out on your own. 
the reason we select i we selected ubuntu is because it mirrors very closely with the <coughs> production server where the actual site is deployed uh, arvind one, yeah. one small question uh, by end of this process yeah uh, you will actually deploy it to you in your demopedia server no 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 so that is ci cd the cd <coughs> here stands for continuous delivery right so there is another cd called continuous deployment right so that is not something we do at devopedia we do it in a controlled phased manner okay so my question is will github action can be used for that also yes you can use it for that as well yes <coughs> okay yeah so this process uh, integrates all your code base test it on that uh, on a, your target machine and then make sure everything is good for uh, delivery or deployment yeah that's correct okay. yeah okay okay <coughs> and one more thing uh, which i didn't mention earlier the beauty of modularing uh, modularizing your jobs is that suppose i want to skip this particular step i can use this conditional statement if so conditional statement i can just say false so this whole thing will be skipped Okay. Any questions at this point? So I have two more things to cover, uh, but before covering that, I just wanted to give priority to any questions that you may have. Okay. If not, uh, let's go back to our first job. See, in this workflow, there are two jobs, as I mentioned, right? and the first uh, job is called the gen matrix now in our earlier example if you remember i had a hard coded matrix firefox chrome and uh, what was that desktop and mobile so that was a hard coded set of parameters but in this particular matrix i have something different the matrix itself is generated in a dynamic manner as you can see here the matrix is generated from the output of another uh, job so this job runs and this job creates an output as you can see here i will not go into the details and this output is then used by the second job which runs in sequence after the first job and this second job creates the matrix from this json file which is created here in the first job now what exactly the first job is doing so the point i want to make is that uh, if you look at our workflows uh, well actually you know uh, whenever people do commits they will do uh, like dozens of commits in a day and uh, sometimes you don't want to trigger a workflow for a very minor commit well it all depends on how your project is man managed and uh, what is the kind of expectation from the project manager or the uh, team lead so a lot of things come into play and the entire software engineering practice within the company so some companies may want the ci cd pipeline to run uh, for every uh, workflow uh, for every push whereas in some companies uh, you may want to do it only once a day right in devopedia in particular we are using a free service from github actions where we have a limited uh, quota 2000 minutes per month so definitely we don't want to unnecessarily use up that quota with every push so what we have come up with is a very simple scheme and that is whenever you uh, i'll just go to devopedia account and i'll show you the our log so you can see here this is our commit log and some of the commit messages you have a prefix or you have a string here at at gui so i hope you can see it at at gui so what it and in some commits we have both at at gui and at at cli so what our workflow will do is it will inspect the commit message you can see here github dot event head commit message it will inspect the commit message and check for this particular string and if this string is found the only then it will execute the workflow for the gui same thing for the cli 
and in this particular manner we dynamically create the matrix so that is the reason why this job executes first and then sequentially the next job takes over so this is how we do it at uh, devopedia uh, using the using particular like magic strings inside the commit message you could do it your own way uh, you know depending on your software engineering practice in your company you can also say for example i want i want to run this workflow on push but only on particular branches you can also specify that i don't remember the exact uh, syntax for that but probably it is something like this right you can probably say something like this it may not be the right syntax but you can do something like this so you can also say right release star something like this so on these branches only you run these workflows so you can also be very uh, restrictive in how you run your workflows but in our case it is not branch dependent rather we have made it uh, dependent on the commit message so that is how we have implemented it okay the last thing is uh, secrets okay for secret you know now uh, everyone knows that you should never commit your secret into github correct that is a uh, standard uh, rule for developers uh, especially in a public repository even in a private repository you shouldn't be doing it but because github is uh, so in our so the way to do it is you can define secrets here so in our environment i am having a variable ci passphrase and secrets ci passphrase so where exactly is this defined this is defined uh, well if i remember correctly so we are inside here okay github actions general okay secrets so you can see here secrets actions so if you click this you will see it so this is where it is maybe i yeah so there you can define your secret and then you can plug it in, plug that in here so uh, when the action script uh, runs automatically it will get it from your configuration so this is how you can manage your secrets uh, which become available automatically to the vm when it is running so any questions the, that's all i have from my side